these opportunities. We don't take them for granted. Um, we thank God because God is using her especially um, in our times to raise a remnant. Hallelujah. Very important in our times. Praise the Lord. Um, I so allow me appreciate Bishop Paul Chiquem and Prophetess Miriam Obina. Hallelujah. Um, and as well, I recognize all the various graces in the house. Um, uh, we appreciate Pastor Helen. Um, bless God for Pastor Seal, for Pastor Bran, Evangelist Henry, Pastor Jacobs. We have Pastor Michael in the house as well. Uh, we have even those that are watching us online. We bless God. We have Pastor Maureen. Uh, let's observe God for all. Um, there is Pastor Jet. All ministers, all protocol observed. And above all, we appreciate the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So in this one hour that I have, less than one hour, let us just lift up our hands as we're going to pray. Father, we thank you for this evening. We welcome you, the Spirit of God, as you're going to speak to us in your word. We pray that you shall open the eyes of our understanding, that you may speak through your word. In Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. Please take your seat as you bless the Spirit of God. Um, Mom, once again, I appreciate God for this moment. Um, we've been granted to share in the Word of God. Hallelujah. Um, a very interesting theme, of course, this week. Uh, derived from uh, the book of Revelation 17. And... Um, Verse 14. Something about the statement. Of course, we have to get there and um, take the reading as the Spirit of God grants us illumination as regards the precepts that are in this word. Amen. Now, the Bible says in Revelation chapter number 17. Amen. I refer to my subject, embracing the Lordship of the Lamb. That is what I'm going to be talking about this evening, embracing the Lordship of the Lamb of God. And um, we get to Revelation 17 and verse 14. Amen. And I will Allow me backtrack a bit to verse 12 because this is where we pick the story from. And verse 12 says, And the ten horns which thou sowest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet but received power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength into the beast. And now it is these that shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. And they, somebody say, and they. Very interesting to note the identification of the armies that the Lamb is using to defeat Satan and his cohorts. Very interesting to note and they I love one thing about the Bible and um, oh yes so when I say embracing the Lordship of the Lamb and they such a powerful statement 
That means Jesus would have overcome this kingdom of darkness himself. But he conscripted an army, a remnant, men that have consciously decided to give their all and be conscripted into the armies of Zion. Amen. So, the lamb to overcome is basing on an army that he has conscripted. And um, he says, and they. And who are they? The Bible clearly says that and they are they that are with him who are called, chosen, and faithful. Glory be to God. Um, of course, Apostle has been um, giving us a dissection of um, the three words in called, chosen, and faithful. I am not going to go into that because at least we've gotten an illumination to that. But I want to speak about how the Lamb then raises men that are called, chosen, Amen. and faithful. It is until when you understand the process that you understand the mechanism, the methodology. It's when you analyze and know the strength. It is when you'll understand and know that this kind of army has special characteristics embedded within them. And ladies and gentlemen, this has been the purpose of the Lamb from the foundations of the earth. He has been raising men that are ready to push back darkness. No matter how dark the canopy is in the spiritual environment, God is always raising men that are pushing back darkness. No matter how bleak, no matter how Satan, no matter how the matter is, the Lamb is always raising men that are always ready to push back darkness. Men whose prayers, it may be a 30 minute prayer, but it shall be a rocket in the spiritual realm. It shall be a missile in the spiritual realm. It shall be an atomic bomb exploding, causing confusion and mayhem in the kingdom of darkness. The Lamb has always raised men. So today I'm just going to I'm just going to let the process that we understand that ladies and gentlemen maybe to some of you what you call your trials has been a training Amen. and in this training with the Lamb of God comes in phases Amen. praise the name of the Lord Amen. the Lamb trains or raises lords that is why his title is the Lord of Lords he does not raise civilians where the Lamb is has always been kings lords or places or men that are always occupying places of hierarchy. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. The Lamb of God does not go to war with civilians. He goes to war with lords. I want you to notice that. So that is why until when you are at the level of him having identified you that you are a lord in some place you are not yet ready for the battle. We are having calamities in the body of Christ because we're having babes. We're having children going to battle. And in that, that is why we see that the, the, the percentage of calamities, the percentage of men that have been beaten because they have not allowed the process to groom them. We have had casualties because the lamb always conscripts lords in the battle. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And in every generation, there are lords that he's raising. Amen. You are, uh, I'm here to tell you, you may not have known who you are, but I'm here to address you that the lamb has addressed you and he has identified you that in the army that he's raising he is raising Lord. so I want to speak about the process God help me because I have less than 45 minutes Amen. praise the name of the Lord Amen. but until when you understand the process you can never appreciate who you are tell your neighbor until when you understand the process you will never appreciate who you are 
or who you are becoming. Quickly, because in the interest of the time that has been apportioned, the word of the Lord, of course, speaks in uh, this sense. And of course, that's the reason why I'll be using Psalms 110. My Bible reader, I, I hope I'm going to be working with you very fast. Psalms 110, and specifically in verse number 1. Something that David uses, and uh, it's what I'm going to pass on, then we are going to begin to build from there that we understand the ladders or the platforms on which the Lamb raises lords to attend to battles. Is my micro is the microphone on? Please, you can read it, they'll find you. What does it say? Psalms 110 and verse 1. Yes, what does it say? He says, and the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou at my, sit right, thou at my right hand until, I make, until I make your enemies thy footstool. Thy footstool. That means to everyone here, it is a portion unto you. A Lord, anytime a title of Lordship appears, that means you are above. That means you are seated in a place of authority. That means everything else is under your feet. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. And that is why I began off by saying that God does not train civilians to sit in these seats. God makes sure he trains men that are willing to give their all to sit in these places. Glory be to God. Amen. I said glory be to God. Amen. In the three identifications that we have mentioned, the called, the chosen, and the faithful, these are stages of the callings. To every stage, God apportions an identification of a man. And of course, in the term called, we have what we call number one, identity. When the Lord calls you, he is handling what they call identity. I want to refer to the story of David because it gives us the best description of men who start out as nobodies, but whose story ends up with men in palaces. They start as shepherds looking after sheep. But they end up as kings in palaces. They start as men who are nobodies. But they end up anointed kings under whose reign Israel lost no battle. They start as nobodies taking care of somebody's sheep. They end up as psalmists who knew that the best thing in their life is a relationship with God. Nothing else matters. That when they sin, they know where they run to. This is the substance. This is the DNA that makes lords for the kingdom. It is not a Sunday best Christian who just comes and thinks you have to carry your Bible and then you think it is okay by, when they, by the time they say the grace of our Lord and you are done. No. David's life is an example. It shows the stages through which God picks him and trains him and nurtures him from a nobody. Ladies and gentlemen, all the heroes of the Bible started from a place called nobody to the place called Lord's. They began to the place where it was called no future. To a place where they were lords. No one started at the high place. They all started from the lowest. But yet heaven trained them. At their end, they were lords. So I'm speaking about embracing the passage to lordship in your life. His lordship. Jesus, by the way, let me tell you this. Let me make this announcement. Hallelujah. Whether you accept it or you don't, Jesus' lordship does not change. Amen. It is like whether you believe it or you don't, His Excellency, the President of Uganda, His Excellency, President Riyali Mushabeni, is the President. Whether you are for it or you are not for it, His lordship still stands. Amen. Hallelujah. But He needs, He wants to work with you as an influencer, as an administrator. Hallelujah. So I want to speak about these phases in life. 
that when you identify the face, maybe someone may be stepping into the face. Maybe someone may be getting out of the face. Maybe someone may be preparing to step into the face. When you identify it, embrace it. Amen. Running from it will only postpone. It will postpone your battles. It will postpone your troubles. It will postpone your tears. When you embrace it, the sooner the better. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. So I want to speak about David. And in the life of David, there were stages in his life that showed a king in preparation. Though still a shepherd boy, but a man whose future was already illuminated to become a lord somewhere. Tell your neighbor, where I am right now is not the determining factor of what I am becoming. Tell your neighbor, where I am right now does not necessarily tell you the story of where I am heading to. So tell him, do not conclude my story based on where I am right now. Because within me, I am embracing a stage that after the stage, I shall be getting to a lordship. I shall be stepping to a lordship. Tell your neighbor, the next time you see me, do not be shocked. Because right now, I may be the shepherd in the backyard, but very soon, you will be seeing a lord somewhere, whether it may be a Lord in a king, maybe be a Lord in business, but you are yet to see a Lord somewhere. Because the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords deals with Lords in this thing. He does not deal with civilians. If you will me say amen. amen. So in the season that David starts off, it's called the season of appointment. Somebody say appointment. appointment. Everyone starts in the place called appointment. The place called appointment. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Has someone 16 and 1. Everyone has a place called appointment. And by the way, when I say appointment, this is after you have confessed Jesus. Now he calls you, he appoints you. And this is how the Bible states it. Please read it for me. Has someone 16 and verses 1. What does it say? First Samuel 16 Samuel, and verse 1. Yes. First Samuel chapter 16 verse 1 says. What does it say? And the Lord said unto now, Samuel. Yes. What does it say to Samuel? How long will you mourn for Saul? Yes. Seeing I have rejected. And I have rejected him. Yes. From reigning over Israel. Continue. Fill the own with oil. Fill the own with oil. And go. Uh huh. I will send it to Jesse. My goodness. Continue. For I have provided me a king. Oh. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I want to repeat to everyone that is seated here, congratulations because there's an appointment upon your head. Praise the name of the Lord. You are not just one that confesses Jesus. There's an appointment sitting upon your head. He's appointing you. It was a time when David is being appointed. And then something interesting he tells the prophet go because already there is someone you may have thought you just came to church by mistake i remember some of us the day we came and we began to minister and i am we thought we we're just here for a while Amen. maybe some of us thought ah i'll be into my business part-time and then i'll be coming also to ministry part-time there was an appointment ready somewhere Oh, the moment you set, you do not know what I'm saying. The moment you set foot inside there, God saw an appointment for family deliverance. God saw an appointment for a national deliverer. God saw an appointment for a turnaround of witchcraft and sorcery. Where the day you showed up, turn your neighbor, tell them the day you showed up was heaven's divine appointment. And the day you embrace this first, you've begun the journey. The platform of your appointment. It's not a mistake that you are here. Amen. Some of you, you do not know what, why. But some of you found every day you are coming. Amen. Something pushed you. Amen. Oh, Amen. hallelujah. There's an appointment upon your head. And this appointment, I have news for you. As long as you tarry, your appointment shall live through its fences. Amen. Glory be to God. I said, glory be to God. Amen. Somebody say, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And this is what happens in the place of appointment. 
Because I won't be skipping. Skip to verse 11. And we see the place of appointment has the following characteristics. When you understand this place called appointment, you will then be careful in the place of your appointment. What does it say? Verse 11 says, What does it say? And Samuel said unto Jesse, Yes. I hear all thy children. And he said, There remains yet the youngest. And ah. behold, he keeps the sheep. Yes. And Samuel said to Jesse, What does it say? Send and fetch him. Correct. For we will not sit down till he comes here. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, when you look at verse 11, Samuel asks Jesse, And he says, Are these all? And Jesse clearly states and he says, they are not all. There's one remaining. But his place looks like he's taking care of sheep. What does the place of appointment mean? Is what I want to clearly state for you. Because our Lord is not just calling you. But he is appointing you. He is appointing you. The place of appointment, of course, will always begin with the place of low or humble beginnings. Never despise a place of humble beginnings. Because when you embrace it, you have begun the journey of appointment. David was a king in the making, but he was found taking care of sheep. Many don't want the place of appointment. You know why? They think they always want the limelight. Ladies and gentlemen, God will not take you anywhere. You are not going to be lifted if you are not ready to embrace the place of humble beginnings. Praise the name of the Lord. Small things you have to do with devotion. For some of you, the small things is being faithful. Maybe faithfulness in your attendance, as simple as just a faithful attendance, could be your place of humble beginnings. For some of you, it could be just the small orders and promptings the Lord gives you. Get into a three-day fast. Seek me in this direction. Stand with the woman of God in this area. Small promptings. Which some may overlook. But yet that is a very powerful platform for your appointment. David was supposed to be a king. But he starts his life out in the backyard taking care of sheep. Tell your neighbor, tell them, do not neglect. Shake your neighbor, tell them, do not neglect. Do not neglect the place of humble beginning. Your devotion, your commitment, your diligence is very important in this time. You know what the Bible says? Proverbs 8, 17, I love those that love me and they that are diligent. To diligent simply means to, to be diligent is not you being consistently as such. To be diligent means always be there. You know there is what they say, just on time and just in time. Amen. One, um, how do I call it? There is one lesson one man was teaching us. On, on, he was speaking and he said, his father told him one lesson. He said, it is better to be one hour early than one minute late. Diligence means when the time is set, you are already there. Amen. You don't need to be reminded the time you are going to rise early and fulfill it. Praise the name of the Lord. The place of appointment. Somebody said the place of appointment. Praise the name of the Lord. The place of appointment. Very important. God is looking at faithfulness in this time. God is searching. Are you? Can you be diligent and be faithful in the small things. Many think you're going to start with the big things. I'll, build, I'll tell you the truth. You're going to start from the small place. In the place of appointment, it is a small place. It is a despised place. It looks like it is a place that you cannot relate with. But yet it is the place that is going to catapult you. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Glory be to God. Matthew 25, 21, please. What does the Bible say? Matthew 25 and verse 21. Matthew chapter 25, verse 21 says, Yes. 
His Lord said unto him, mm -hmm. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. This servants. is the reward of, a, of the first place. God is looking for faithfulness in this phase. God is searching for your faithfulness. God is searching for you. Let me tell you, whoever lied to you that integrity and faithfulness are not rewarded, he's a liar. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. For you to be promoted from the place of appointment, integrity and faithfulness and commitment are your passwords for you to get to the next stage. Don't tell me how gifted you are. Don't tell me how connected you are. If you are lacking faithfulness, you're lacking integrity, you are lacking commitment in what you're doing, you don't qualify for the next phase. Very true. Praise the name of the Lord. Wherever you are, whether the usher that cleans the chairs, in whatever you do, these three, faithfulness, integrity, and commitment. Read that statement again. Matthew 25 and verse 21. Matthew chapter 25 verse 21 says, Yes. His Lord said unto him, And his Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Is that all? You have been faithful over a few because things. Because of this, this is why he was recommended. He has been faithful over what? A few things. Over a few things. They may look like they're trivial. They may look like, mm -hmm. but yet, God is watching. I'm speaking about your appointment. I'm not just talk, talked about Lordship, it's just appointment. Well done, good and faithful servant. You've been what? You have been good and faithful. You have been good and faithful in the what? You have been faithful over a few over things. Over a few things. I'll make you ruler over many things. I'll make you things. a ruler over many things. Enter thou into and then the says, joy of the Lord. Enter into the joy of the Lord. I'm going to be frank with you. I'll be honest with you. Praise the name of the Lord. Based on how willing you are ready to surrender is the, play, is the level of authority that the Lord is going to release unto you. How willing you are to give it to him is how higher God is going to lift you. This is the first rank of appointment. It's based on faithfulness. It's based on integrity. It's based on commitment. Things like loyalty are checked here. Hallelujah. Please read for me Psalm 78. 70 to 72. Psalm 78. 70 to 72. What does it say? Yes. 70. Yes. Psalm 78 verse 70 says he chose David also his servant. Now the Bible says he chose David. Yes, please read. And took him from the sheepfold. And he took him from the sheepfold. 71. From following the ewes great with young. From following the ewes. Those are the sheep that David was taking care of. Yes, uh-huh. Great with young. Great and young. Yes, continue. He brought him to feed Jacob his people. Then he brought him to be a ruler over Jacob his people. And Israel his inheritance. And Israel his inheritance. 72. 72. So he fed them according to the integrity and of David his heart. And David fed them because there was an integrity that he had cultured himself in the time when he was nurturing the sheep of his father Jesse. And guided them by the skillfulness of his And hands. he guided them by the skillfulness of what? Of his hands. Of his hands. <laughs> by the time the Lord appoints you to be a Lord, by the time the Lord approves of you, by the time the Lord says you are faithful, I am handing you now a ministry. I am handing you business. I am handing you an empire. It's not because you have 100 million sh uh, shillings on your account. It's because there's an integrity in your heart. Mom usually asks, 
And this is the question that I'm posing. Because this is what qualifies you. Your faithfulness in what is not yours is what qualifies you in this season. The sheep were for Jesse. They were not for David. But his faithfulness with the sheep gives him a platform that God says, I've seen your integrity. And because of that, I'm giving you a kingdom. These things are not about prayer. This, the economy of, 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 of our promotion is not about how long you pray or how much you pray or how many scriptures you have. The check is here. Your integrity and lo your loyalty with what is not yours is what the Lord is looking at. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I said praise the name of the Lord. We are all servants and ministers here. But you know there are some people who when they look at this ministry and even if God has blessed them and they have the capacity. Do you know what they say? That means that is, that, is, that is their problem. That's for prophetess. That's for those people. And yet God hey and yet you're busy asking God for promotion. I think you're asking the wrong prayer. By the way, ma'am, this one I discovered. Uh, I don't know if you're ready for this one. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah? yes, we pray for promotion, isn't it? Yes. Isn't it? Yes. We pray for promotion, isn't it? Yes. But I discovered the key for promotion is your faithfulness in another man's work. Amen. How faithful you are with your stewardship is how God will then promote you to own yours. Hello? I said hello. Are you still in Psalm 78? Please read that statement again for me. Let us read it again. Psalm 78 verse mm. 70 says, Yes. He chose David also his servant uh -huh. and took him from the sheepfold. Continue. 71. Yes. From following the ooze. He was following. He said he took him from the sheepfold. You know that in the place of your appointment, it's not time to seek for favor. In the place of your appointment, you don't pray for favor. Favor, at, you attract favor by your integrity. Amen. In the place of ah, see, we have had people having. You see, this is this is why people are. You, you don't need to compete. Let me tell you, competition. You know why people are competing now? You are they are, they are competing for, for either attention from the, their leaders. It's because they don't understand the principle integrity or loyalty in what is not yours attracts favor to come your way. It attracts your promotion to come your way. Hmm. Hallelujah. David took care of sheep that were for Jesse. But his integrity and his faithfulness springed him up. And this is what it says. What did you say? Yes. Yes. From following that he was following the ewes great and young to what? He got to the place now when now he is feeding Israel or he is leading Israel, the people of God. Yes. Mm -hmm. And he fed them by the integrity of his heart. Is that what your Bible says? Mark it very well. These are the principles, ladies and gentlemen. Otherwise, some of you may pray and continue praying and pray your lungs out and pray your hair off and pray your nails off. You, but you may not have a result because this is the secret according to the integrity of his heart and according to the skillfulness of his hands 
he fed Israel. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. So in the place of your appointment, it is not you calling God to lift you. It is not you calling for favor. It is you asking God to give you the heart of integrity. It is you telling God, give me the heart of integrity. May I be faithful. May I be loyal in what is not mine. It's not time to ask for nations when you are here in a place of appointment. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Because this is what Jesus is checking. We usually say yes we are called, we are chosen, we are faithful. Wait. Until when you are ready to embrace the place called appointment. God is checking your identity here. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I said praise the name of the Lord. Psalms 139. And verse 1. In this time is when God will train you to begin to have a consistent pattern. Sometimes he'll be working you up maybe to pray for the ministry. Sometimes maybe he'll be doing, there are certain things you, you will now be, you will have established a pattern between you and God that even your pastor does not know. I remember in those days when mom used to tell us there are people, if they put money in the basket, if they brought their tithes to the church, they always wanted her they even went to her and they, told, they wanted to advise her on how to use the tithe of the church. <laughs> See, such people, whether you like it or not, are going nowhere. Please, what does the Bible say? Psalms 139. Psalms 139 verse, verse 1. 1 says, yes. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. Ah. <laughs> Repeat that again. <laughs> Oh Lord, yes. you have searched me yes. and known me. Uh, you're done? Yeah, okay. Skip to 23. Verse 23 says, yes. Search me, O oh God. Then he says again, Search me, O oh God. And know my heart. And know my heart. Try me. Try me. And know my thoughts. And know my thoughts. You're done. Amen. Continue. Verse 24. Yes. And see if there be and any wicked way in me. see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. And then lead me in the way everlasting. This is what you do in the place of your appointment. Amen. I said amen. Glory be to God. I said glory be to God. I'm just talking about being called. That is what I'm talking about. Because I have less than 15 minutes. I'm just talking about being called. I'm not even going to touch being chosen or being faithful. I'm just talking about your calling. Your calling. Because when you get to the place of your appointment. Hello? Praise the name of the Lord. I said praise the name of the Lord. When you get from the place of your appointment, you'll get to the second phase called the place of early success. And now I've discovered this is where many are missing it. They think when they succeed after the place of appointment, they think they have arrived. Hmm. <laughs> In the life of David, the place of early success is 1 Samuel 17, 1 Samuel 18. This is after he kills Goliath. And the whole nation is singing his name. <laughs> David thinks, it seems I've arrived. Not David, but to many, they think they have arrived. And yet in the place of early success, God is checking your humility. 
One statement was made, and a mama always says, he says, the greatest test is not when you are poor. The greatest test is in the place of authority and power. If you can still maintain humility in that place, then you know that God is dealing with your heart. Hallelujah. The place of early promotion. Somebody say the place of early promotion. Because of course, after your appointment, God will put you to a place of early promotion, early success. The first wave of success. But it does not mean you are a Lord yet. Let us go and read and see what the scriptures say. I said first Samuel, when you're there, say amen. Hallelujah. This is when oh, you find you have favor before the leaders. This is when your business, you've started, you're getting promotions. This is when you say, ah, I don't know those people that have been at our ministries for long. Which God do they pray to? First, we've just come and already we are getting breakthroughs. No. <laughs> it is not breakthrough. It's called the place of early success. You still, have a, you still have a journey. How many were there? <laughs> when you came, you were getting job appointments after job. <laughs> and like, I, I wonder, these people who say God is not working, what is going on? <laughs> it's when you saw open doors. It was called just the place of early success. Hmm. <laughs> oh my goodness oh my goodness may God help us I said may God help us in Jesus mighty name please read for me first Samuel and I'm, I'm in verses number I'm in chapter number 18 verse 1 you'll be skipping of course in the interest of time and what does it say First Samuel chapter 18 verse 1 says Yes. And it came to pass hmm. when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul. That is King Saul. Yes. What that did the he soul say? of Jonathan mm. was knit with the soul of David. Mm -hmm. And Jonathan loved him as his own soul. We're going to continue. Yes. Verse 2. Yes. And Saul took him that day mm. and would let him go no more. Mm. Sorry. Let me do it again. And Saul took him that day yes. and would let him go no more home to his father's house. Continue. Mm -hmm. Verse 3. Then Jonathan and David made a covenant because he loved him as his own soul. Uh -huh. Verse 4. Yes. And Jonathan stripped himself of the robe yes. that was upon him Continue. and gave it to David mm -hmm. and his garments, even to his sword and to his bow and to his gado. Read verse 5 because that is the emphasis. And what happens in verse 5? Verse 5 says, uh -huh. And David went out. And anywhere David went out, with wherever Saul sent eh, him, wherever Saul sent him, and behaved himself wisely, he behaved himself wisely. If it is your Bible, underline that. When he was the favored boy, do you know what happens when you're the favored guy? <laughs> you sometimes begin to think you've arrived. It is called the place of early success. I'll tell you this. Favor is not permanent. Success is not permanent. It is seasonal. Did you hear me, Pastor Sio? Favor is seasonal. Success is seasonal. Promotion is seasonal. After the place of your appointment, God will give you a test of early success. But you know what he's after? He's after you realizing that God deals with humble people. He's after you asking yourself if you are aware that it comes from God. Not from your wisdom or your skill. And I'm going to show you why God allowed David to enjoy early success. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. When God gives you early success, he's simply asking you, can you still seek me the way you sought me when I just appointed you? Or when you've arrived, you think you've arrived.
the way you came to I am the way you loved God, the way you sought him, now that you have a certain responsibility, are you still seeking him the way? One, one man of God made a door, he impressed him and he said the door that you opened through your knees or through whatever you did for God make sure you maintain that door open no matter how far you've been promoted make sure you maintain that door being opened because the day it closes it's going to be trouble. Whatever you did for God to say, now after your appointment, I'm giving you this success. Make sure you maintain that door. If it was sowing, maintain it. Whatever you did, maintain it. Amen. God is looking for consistency when he gives you early success. The things you still did in the time of your beginning, are you still doing it? I'm going to shock you something. Ladies and gentlemen. Do you know that despite David working for King Saul. Because when King Saul had an evil spirit. David played the harp. And the Bible says and the spirit left. But do you know that despite David having that. He was still going back to take care of his father's sheep. Whatever it is that made the heart of God become tender to you. That made God somehow be biased towards you than to others. Let me tell you, even God is biased. Did you know that? Forget this crap that they say. God is no respect of people. God, no. Even God can be biased towards a man. Hallelujah. I said, Deuteronomy 8, 11, 14. The place of early success. What, what goes on when it is in the place of early success? Yes. Oh, Jesus, my time is soon up. Mm -hmm. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 18 says, Deuteronomy 8, verse 11 to 14. 8, 11 to 14, yes. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 11 says, Yes. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God. It says, Beware that you do not forget the Lord your God. In not keeping his commandments mm -hmm. and his judgments Continue. and his statutes, mm -hmm. which I command thee this day. Why? So, lest when thou hast eaten that and art no, full. Lest when. <laughs> when <laughs> When now you think you've arrived, let me paraphrase. <laughs> when you think now, ah, I have, I, I, I can now afford the rent now. Ah, what is the use of going for, for, for night of champions? No, it's not night of champions. What, what is the use of me going there now that I have, I, 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 I you know that you know your, your parameters that by which you measure your success. Hallelujah. Amen. Now that this, this is the instruction. Please read. Yes. Uh huh. Less when you have eaten and are full. But now less when you're eaten and you're full. And have built goodly houses. And even the houses you've tried, you, he has given you even the house. Tell your neighbor the early success syndrome. Mm -hmm. And dwelt therein. And now you are dwelling there. Verse 13. Yes. And when thy herds and thy flocks multiply. And when your herds and flocks have multiplied. And, that's, and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied. And now even your silver and gold is multiplying. That and, what? And all that you have is multiplied. And all that you have is multiplying. Yes. Verse 14. 14. Then thy heart be lifted up. But then your heart be lifted up. And you forget the Lord thy God. And you forget the Lord your God. Which brought thee forth out of the Who land of Egypt. brought you out from the land of Egypt. From the house of bondage. From the house of bondage. Ladies and gentlemen, your situation is not permanent. Some of you, you are just in the place of appointment. Soon you're going to the place of early success. But he says, when you get there, don't lift up your heart. I'm just talking about being cold. This is all just being cold. Not even yet being chosen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I said, praise the name of the Lord. May God help you. 
May God help me. May God help us. Because many, when they get here, they think they have arrived. Hmm. But you know that it is from this phase that David gets into one of the worst seasons of his life. Most of you hear of what they call Adulam and you think it's just Adulam was seven long years. But even that had a purpose. But in all these things, God is asking, are you ready to embrace your seasons? Are you ready to embrace them? I only have five minutes. Lift up those hands. Wherever you are, even you watching me, because him being the king of kings and the lord of lords means that he is going to make sure he takes you from somewhere. Make this be your prayer. Father, give me a heart that is soft towards you. May I be tender hearted towards you. Tell him, Lord, may even in anything that you give me, may I still be like one who does not know anything. May it all be nothing to me, but you be the one that has essence in my life. Because as long as you are ready and willing, tell him, Father, it's my heart. Just pray. Pray for your, pray for your seasons. Pray for your time. Pray for your time. Because God is about to win a war for us. But he says, be careful. Less when you enter there and you are high. Mom usually makes a prayer. She says, Father, preserve us where we are going. You may not know what that prayer means. Preserve us when we are entering there. Preserve us in the place of success. Preserve us in the place where you are changing, removing tears. Make it be a prayer. Let me tell you, I know you've cried a lot. I know you've been, you've, some of you, the place of appointment, you, there's, it has been a place of tears. It has been a place of despising. It has been a place where you've been asking God, even me, can you remember me? But hey, there's a place where God is taking you. Tell him, pray for your heart. If you don't, let me tell you, many have failed on this platform. On the, not this one of I am, but on the platform of early success. On the platform of God remembering them. On the platform of God wiping their tears. Tell him, Father, I will not be part of that. Help me, help me have a tender heart towards you. May my heart always be like that of a child. That I will always run to you. That I will always be tender hearted towards you. Make that your prayer in this season. Tell him, Father, anywhere I have been lazy for some I'm in the place of appointment, you even became lazy. The king of kings is going to wage war, but he is now raising men and women. But the heart issue is where he's beginning from. So let it be your prayer as he's preparing you this week. I know other speakers are going to be speaking, but this has been a preparation. As you prepare yourself, tell him, Father, it is my heart. I bring this heart once again. Many, we've seen many, when they were paupers, when they lacked, they looked like they were seeking God. That is what mom usually says. But when they tested Alice's success, not knowing that there are also times to come, they tested Alice's success and they quickly forgot God. They quickly forgot his virtues. They quickly forgot his ways. They quickly forgot where they got the success. Tell him, Father, may I not forget. Help me not for Some of you, mom spoke and she said, there are some of you, God is going to release wealth. But this wealth is not for you to be known for, not for you to build billions, not for you to have bank accounts that have billions of figures. This wealth is for you to stand and know that I'm returning to the work of God. I'm sharing this. If at all you don't have that, it is not coming your way. Pray. I am family. We, we know how to do warfare, but the things of the heart, when they tell you to pray for your heart, you are praying and, and, and you are praying in silence. Tell him this is this is also, this is also warfare. When your heart is not standing with God, there is no way you both of you can win. Tell him it's very important. It's very important. He's looking for those that he's calling. And when they pass the level of being called, they then will be chosen. And after the place of being chosen then they will be said this is faithful and to him give a kingdom and to him give a territory and to him give a region and to him give a nation 
and to him give whatever it is but it starts here father we pray for everyone here i lift up everyone that is here in the name of jesus i pray that you will give us tender hearts towards you because lord for some in the season of their appointment in the season where you are taking them through the place of training some because of being despised suddenly gave up along the way some due to the waiting became tired now that we return in this season as you've said that the lamb is waging war and the lamb is overcoming for we know that there are situations that we shall look at again and we shall never see again but the situation the, the issue is not about the enemies defeated the issue is our heart towards you because you seek men who are ready that their heart shall be your home it's my prayer oh god take us back again to that place where our hearts will be willing the bible says that if you're willing and you're obedient you shall eat the good of the land it's my prayer this morning it's my prayer king of glory for that we say take all the praise take all the glory for that which you're doing in our lives in Jesus mighty name we've prayed somebody say amen, amen. glory be to God hallelujah come on bless the name of Jesus hallelujah well friends we want to thank God this is all the time we had for today and uh, we want to say a blessed night and uh, make this as a prayer point from the ones you had from the time of Apostle Isaac make this a prayer point in Jesus mighty name greetings from my mother Dr. Emmanuel Agnes and um, see you again tomorrow we are here once again so do not forget this is a very prophetic season and from us here as the grace that is upon my mother is with us here we release it into your houses as well we release it into your build businesses we release it into your sitting rooms we release it onto your children and to your your whatever it is that you set your hands to do this grace that wins warfare this grace that multiplies this grace that lifts the poor from the pauper to the place of the palace may this grace be with you this night in jesus mighty name why don't we say the words of the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever in Jesus' mighty name and surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I'll dwell in the house of the Lord with my wife and children and great-grandchildren forever and ever in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. Meet you again, once again. Greetings from my mother, Dr. Prophetess Emmanuel Agnes. Shalom and a blessed night. Amen. God bless.